if we can determine the behavior of cost in managerial accounting, as managers, we can then predict our costs. So what we'll be doing in, is looking at uh, costs and saying, are they a variable cost, meaning that the more units you produce, the more your cost is. So I always use the example of chocolate chip cookies. So if I look at a chocolate chip cookie and say there are 16 chips in every chocolate chip cookie, then uh, the cost of my chocolate chips will go up the more cookies I produce. Does that make sense? Now here's the fun part. A variable cost is fixed per unit because we know the cost of 16 chocolate chips and that's a fixed amount for every cookie we produce. So notice that a variable cost is fixed per unit, but it's variable in your total cost because the more units you produce, you're right, the more the cost is. If I was to graph this and look at dollars here, in other words, what we spend on the cost of our materials or our labor, and look at our units over here, notice that we have starting at the origin going straight up what the variable cost in total will be. Now if we find the slope of this line, oh my goodness, yes, the slope of the line, which is what delta y over delta x rise over run, will we find what we call the variable rate or, in other words, the variable cost per cookie, or the variable cost per product, or the variable cost per activity. So one of the things we're going to be doing this chapter is finding this variable rate using one of uh, a variety of methods. So that's a variable cost. Now, as far as examples, um, on your cell phone, do you pay for um, the cost for every minute you talk? If you do, that's a variable cost because you pay on a per minute basis. Uh, commonly, direct materials and direct labor are variable costs because the more units you produce, the more your cost is. If I use units of production for depreciation, if I can spell, if I use units of production for depreciation, aren't I then applying my depreciation on a per unit amount? So that would make it a variable cost. The next kind of cost we want to look at is a fixed cost. And a fixed cost is fixed irregardless of how many units uh, we produce and sell, or how many services we provide, or how many activities we do. If I was to graph this, Notice that within my relevant range of activity, in other words, if I'm looking at dollars and units again, doesn't matter how many units I produce and sell is fixed, fixed, a straight line. Some of you with your cell phones pay for what? So much a month for unlimited minutes. In that case, your cell phone usage is what? A fixed cost per month. Likewise, if I use straight line depreciation, no matter how many units I produce and sell, my depreciation is a flat amount per month, isn't it? So straight line depreciation, cell phone usage, which is flat fee per month, fixed cost. Other ones that you'll see are like rent. Do you pay so much for your rent regardless of how many, how many people live in the apartment? Yeah, so rent. Uh, another one would be insurance. Those are what we call fixed costs, fixed for a unit of time. If I was to uh, tell you what that looked like, it's um, that a fixed cost is equal to, um, let's see, let's make it B. So a fixed cost is fixed regardless. The last kind of cost we're going to talk about is a mixed cost. And a mixed cost has a little bit of fixed and a little bit of variable. Uh, and how I can tell this cost is, if I was going to uh, come up with a formula, it's Y, total cost, is equal to um, uh, MX plus B. B being the fixed, M being the variable rate or slope, 
and x being the activity. So I bet you've seen this formula before, haven't you? So that's what we'll do to find a vari variable and fixed or mixed cost. And it graphs like this. Where it hits the origin is the fixed component. And can I still find the slope there for the variable rate? So stay tuned.